Backlit. Welcome back or welcome here if it's your first time. Today, I've got a special video for you. My hair was behaving, so I figured it was the day to film this. Today, we're talking all about curls. This is gonna be Jacqueline's Curls 101. This is going to be different than probably other curl videos out there because I feel that my curls are a little bit different. I have very fine hair. I've had to do a lot of my own research over the years to figure out what works because the most commonly recommended things never worked for me. I figured, I've spoken to a couple of you about this, about potentially doing a video regarding curly hair care and that sort of thing. And the only reason why I put off doing it this long was because I didn't want to leave anyone out of certain videos and I know not everyone has curly hair. And of those who do, very few people embrace it. I'm someone who started embracing my curly hair full time about two or three years ago now. So it's definitely gotten a lot curlier now that I don't constantly pull and try to undo what it does naturally. I'm gonna show you all of my curly necessities from styling products to what I wash with and condition with, everything that I do, everything that has to do with my hair, we're gonna talk about it today. I hope this answers any questions you might have. If there are remaining questions that I don't answer for you, please leave them for me down below. Let's jump in. The first curly hair necessity. This one has been the longest running necessity in my life, and you've seen it already. And this is a turby towel. Well, it's actually called a Turby Twist, this particular one. This you can pick up at Walgreens or Walmart. It is a special hair towel. It is made of microfiber, so it's not going to be as harsh as a traditional bath towel on your hair. It doesn't cause as much breakage. And this really absorbs a lot of water. I tend to wear this while I am doing my makeup and then I will dry my hair after. This is something that has been a part of my life for I want to say like seven or eight years now. I mean, even before I was curly, this was something that I invested in. These are four or five dollars at Walmart. I think you can even get a two pack of them for like six or seven dollars. There's a couple of different brands that make them. I usually find these in the as seen on TV section at Walgreens or Walmart. But I know Conair sells one as well. If you ever see me with the like pink leopard one, that's a Conair one that I got on a trip because I forgot mine. Since I'm not doing a demo for you, I'm gonna describe as best I can how my routine goes so that you guys can understand. Basically, after I'm done washing my hair, when I turn off the shower, I grab this first before my body towel even, and I flip my head over, and I just rough up all the roots. What I'm doing by doing this when it's wet is just kind of separating the curls and letting them kind of form. Rather than having it all slick together in one ponytail and then wrapping it up in this, that's not gonna help your curls at all. And then I kind of scoop them up in here and stack them on top of my head and then wrap this around the back. If you have super, super long hair, it may not all fit in here. I have had long hair, I mean, chest length-ish. I've never really gotten much longer than that. You can get your hair in there. It does make it a little bit soaked past a certain point if you have a lot of hair. So try to really wring out that excess water before you flip over and rough up things. But I really enjoy this. It helps to soak up the excess water before you go in and blow dry. Because personally, for me, since I have fine hair, I cannot get volume unless I use a blow dryer to dry my hair. I cannot air dry and get any sort of volume. It will be flat on my head. That's why there's still heat involved in my routine. I find also with curly hair, the closer it gets to being dry while still having some dampness to it, the more curl you can encourage out of it when you take that diffuser to it. Since we're starting to talk about that, let's move on. The second necessity is a diffuser of some sort. I'm gonna show you the same one I showed you in my first haul, which is this Curly Co. one. It's a collapsible one, which I really like for travel. And honestly, just in general storage, this is a lot harder to store than this, you know? I also really enjoy this for reason I mentioned before, that I, don't, I can't clobber myself in the back of the head because this thing just, most diffusers are hard plastic and I've bruised the back of my head countless times over the years. My biggest key with diffusing, especially for spiral type curls and if you want volume, is you're upside down the entire time. You don't come up for anything. You're upside down blow drying your hair the whole time. You might be sideways upside down or this side upside down or front ways upside down, but you're upside down the entire time. 
And if you're wondering why my hair parts differently every time I do my hair, that's exactly why. But I can tell you, as the years went on and as I learned to kind of work with my hair more and allow it that sort of freedom, it has really started behaving better. And though it looks different every day, it doesn't usually look bad. I mean, the worst about this is that this just doesn't want to stay back here. I could really bobby pin that or hairspray it if I cared enough, but I don't. And I have fine hair, so you'll find that I don't use hardly any styling products. We're about to get to that portion of this because it will all weigh my hair down. So I literally just have gel in it right now and just from diffusing it, that's all. And that's, that's it in here. I'm gonna show you all my curls real quick. So for me, the most curly cues and stuff happen on this top layer. The most spirally curls happen on this top layer here. The least amount of curling for me happens on these lower layers. They don't wanna curl up, they just wanna kinda of hang there. Another tip I will give you, if you have curly hair and you're rocking it full time, is you need, need, need to see a stylist who specifically cuts curly hair. A couple of years ago, I would not have told you that. I would have thought that, that was total smoke, that someone was blowing, that it was not legitimate. Someone is just charging you more for the same haircut. And I don't believe that anymore. I have experienced several different hairstylists at different levels of expertise and I am the happiest with the girls who specifically are trained to cut curly hair. Let me tell you why it's different. When I go and get my hair done now, they cut according to my curl pattern. Yep, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But after they wash my hair, when they bring me back to the chair, what they do is they will start twirling little sections when they can see the curls starting to take shape, starting to clump into their little their little formations, they will twirl them and they cut them like that. I have seen a huge transformation in how my curls behave in the last nine months because of how I'm getting my hair cut, how I'm getting it colored, and a product I'm about to show you. I'm not here to sell you guys on stuff. I've told you before, I am not a salesperson. I just can't do it. I'm not, I'm not someone who's gonna sell you something you don't need. That's just not how I work. I want my money to work for me and not the other way around. Turby Tail, diffuser, upside down, get yourself a curly, cut. Some curly stylists will cut your hair dry. Some of them want you to come in with it curly so that they can see what needs to be done. That's cool too. I'm not trying to discount different styles or different ways of doing that. But if you are someone who rocks a curly head all day, every day, go see someone who specializes in your type of hair for a cut. To style these curls, all I use when I'm diffusing my hair is this. And this is Miss Jessie's Jelly Soft Curls. What's nice about this curl gel, no crunch. None, none, none whatsoever. Unless you use too much of this, you're not gonna get any crunch. It's just not the texture I go for. I want a really natural texture. I want it to look like natural curls. I want it to feel like natural curls, but I want volume. I get that with this. With this and blow drying my hair upside down with the diffuser, that's all I did today. That's what I did right before coming to film this. This is what it does. Usually around between a nickel and a quarter size amount of this on my hair. It doesn't smell particularly good. It kind of smells like baby powder, but the smell doesn't linger. It's not very strong. But this is amazing because you can, I mean, you can air dry with this gel as well. They have a specific gel for air drying, which I think is kind of funny. But this is the softest gel that they carry. And so I've tried several of the Miss Jessie's line. This is my favorite. This is the one, the only one that I have repurchased because it's just so dang good. I believe it's $14 at Target. Well worth it. Eight and a half ounces takes you a long time, unless you got a ton of hair, in which case I'm so jealous and please send me a picture. I generally wash my hair every other day. I do have a very oily scalp, so I can't go every three days. That would just be too, too long for me. But on days when I do not wash my hair, sometimes it will fall flat in certain areas. Sometimes I spent way too long on one side all night and those curls are crushed or pulled straight or whatever. And if that's the case, I will go in with something like this. This is the one I've been using lately. 
This is the Bamboo Smooth Curls Anti-Frizz Curl Reactivating Spray. That's a mouthful. Basically a curl reactivator. So you shake it up and mix it and then you mist it all over your curls. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't need it. And then it's supposed to not add any frizz but dampen it enough so that you can kind of scrunch and reactivate your product from yesterday to kind of get your curls back in line, back in shape. That will be my first step for days when I revive my curls. As I mentioned before, I do have an oily scalp. So once that dries, if my curls have reformed and my scalp is still a little bit oily and I need a little bit of a refresher, then I will reach for the Pantene Pro-V dry shampoo. This is really economical, I appreciate that, and I believe it's $5 at the drugstore, this dry shampoo. It doesn't leave white cast, it smells really clean, and it doesn't leave a lot of buildup in my hair. It does help with my oils. It's not probably the most intense dry shampoo out there, but this one works really well for me. You may need to experiment with a few different dry shampoos. That's the story that I hear from most people. So it's a lot like mascara or foundation. You gotta kinda test it out and find what formula works for you, for your chemistry. But I will do that at the root and kind of upside down on my scalp if my scalp is a little bit oily and I will let that sit for a couple minutes before I kinda go in there and disperse it with my hands. I don't generally take a blow dryer to dirty hair just because I think it makes it smell worse. Maybe that's weird, maybe that's too much information, so I'm sorry, but that's why I never blow dry dry shampoo. <laughs> I wanted to show you how I get a little bit more volume on days when I'm not getting what I want right away from the gel and from diffusing and stuff. And this is a new product to me. This is one that I've been using for a couple of weeks now and I really, really love it. This is the, by OGX, the Organics Air Care brand called the Botifying and Fiber Full Sugar High Tousle Spray. And it says with bamboo fibers and sugarcane extract, get loose, lived in look. Separates, elevates, and defines. Texture without the dry out. Hello, this is awesome. This is so good. This is the best, best texturizing spray I have used. And I've tested a couple of the really expensive ones on my various trips to Sephora and when I worked there and I just wasn't that impressed so I never took the plunge and bought the like 40 or 50 dollar texturizing sprays that everyone talks about. This one I feel like the smell is really similar though not the same as some of the dry bar products which smell so good and I feel like this smells like a sugar spun version of that fragrance. And it's just amazing. Like I understand why they call it the sugar high tousle spray because it just smells like cotton candy. It smells so good. But I want to show you how impressive this is. I'm going to give it a good shake. I like to work out both arms. So, What's surprising to me about this texturizing spray is I feel like it sprays on super wet for a texture spray. Normally, see? I do it in short bursts because it's like wet. It's not fully dry. It's not a powder spray like so many of them are. See how much more like lift and volume I got out of that? It's just because my hair is so fine that it's almost like slippery, it's slick. So that texture spray gives it something to grip onto and helps it to stack a little better. I just adore it. It smells so good. It smells like an extension of my perfume because I love those kind of kind of sweet perfumes. They just smell a little different on me and I like it. This Organics or OGX brand Fiberful spray. Go try it out. I think it's eight or nine dollars. It's really, really nice and I think it's a dupe for the dry bar. So those are my styling products. As far as tools, the only tool I will say that you need as a curly girl is a blow dryer. Up until recently, I have always purchased like a $30 hair dryer from the grocery store, use it for five years, and then when it burns out or smells like it's on fire, you go and buy a new one, whatever one has a diffuser with it, and you use that one until it does the same thing. I have done that all my life until this point. 
I think you guys have heard me talk about this before. I've mentioned Nordstrom Rack's flash sale site, which is called Houtlook. I noticed that they started carrying more hair tools. And while I was on the prowl looking for a T3, I came across a different brand. I've been really, really happy with my purchase, so I wanted to share it with you guys. This is something that comes up on that flash sale site. I did see it again just last week, so I'm sorry I didn't film this in time to tell you. This is by the brand Brilliance New York. It's not sponsored in any way. I spent my own money on this. This is their 3600 volt, or whatever they call it, the 3600 line of their blow dryer. It comes in black and white. I picked up white. I love this. It's got several different controls. Oh, sorry, lost the cord. It's got several different controls, and then it's got this light right here for the ion that it's on. So you can have either positive or negative ions. Your little ion switch is here. Your heat switch is here. Your speed is here. And then your on switch. So the only thing I dislike about this design is that I wish that these buttons were maybe like here or something like a normal hair dryer, because I just find that being on the side and being right-handed, it's like right under where my hand would be. Lately, what I've been doing is honestly just holding my hair dryer like this, which may make me look like a maniac, but it's actually quite comfortable when I'm blow drying my hair upside down. No complaints as far as that going forward. I've, I've adapted and I'm doing just fine. It also has this cold shot button right here. Since it doesn't have a cold setting, you kind of have to hold that if you want to cool down the hair. And what's cool about this ion button, which I did some research after receiving this because I didn't know what setting to put it on. And what I learned is that the positive ions are really good for smoothing your hair. So if you are trying to go straight or blow dry it out or do a Brazilian blowout or anything like that, you want to put it on the positive ions to kind of seal the hair shaft and seal that cuticle together. Whereas the negative ions supposedly kind of rough up the cuticle of your hair or rough up that exterior shaft of texture of the hair. So that's personally what I put mine on because I'm always going for volume. I can dole down the frizz if I need to, but I'm going for volume. So I always put it on the negative ions. If you are someone with straight or frizzy hair, I would do the positive ions. This is called, I think it's for part of their diamond dust line. So supposedly there's diamond dust in here integrated as a part of the machine. I don't know about that, but it's supposed to be ionic technology and it's really special. When I was comparing it with the T3, it seemed like the same product. And this retails for about $350. I picked mine up on Outlook and paid $55 for it. This came with two different concentrators and a diffuser. Not, not this one I'm showing you, this one I bought separately, but it comes with its own diffuser. The diffuser is really good, it's just solid plastic and I hit myself in the back of the head with it. So I do think that this makes a difference. My hair has gotten much, much curlier and healthier since I've been using this. Honestly, the thing that spurred me to buy it was one day I was so excited because I have an oily scalp and this was not the day I washed my hair. And I woke up and my scalp wasn't oily. And that never happens to me on second day hair. I was super excited. I ran into my husband's office and I said, smell my hair, smell my hair. Tell me what it smells like. He said, burning. I was like, ah, dang it. <laughs> I blow dried my hair yesterday and it still smells like my crappy blow dryer. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed because I was just so excited that my head didn't smell like oil. I didn't realize I still smelled like I was on fire. That's when I decided to start researching and look into a nicer blow dryer and it's been really helping me out a lot. Plus I can get my hair to about 80-90% dry in 10 minutes. Whereas my old blow dryer, I could be blow drying my hair for 25 minutes and it's maybe maybe 60-70% dry. It's supposed to be a lot healthier for your hair. There's a lot more technology involved in the making of that. Moving on to prep. Let's talk shower stuff. The things that have been a part of my lineup, the longest, the longest out of all of them is probably this, the Macadamia Natural Oil Deep Repair Mask. I love this stuff. It does kind of weigh your hair down if you're like me, you have more fine hair and you want volume. Don't use this second, use it first. Use this before you shampoo and then you won't have the same weigh down factor. You'll still get the benefits, but it's just not as heavy if you shampoo after and remove some of that. This is something I generally do about every two weeks or 
more often if I notice that my hair is particularly brittle. I try to pay attention. Since I am blonde, I try to take it easy on my hair. Something that I use on occasion when my hair seems particularly brittle and I'm not in the shower is this Living Proof Perfect Hair Day, the Nightcap Overnight Mask. Overnight Perfector, sorry. Um, this I will put on before going to bed, generally when I'm doing my nighttime skincare. If my hair is behaving like it's kind of unhappy, it's kind of dry, it's kind of been beat up by the heat or sun exposure or whatever, I will put several pumps of this into my hair before I put it up and go to bed. It dries really quickly and it doesn't stain your pillow or anything like that. I haven't received any harsh breakouts or anything like that following this product and it really helps to kind of smooth my hair and just make it a little bit healthier. It's hard to describe hair masks for someone like me whose texture changes a lot. Quickly, how I wash and condition my hair on a regular basis. The shampoo that I use every time is Nizoral, this anti-dandruff shampoo. I've mentioned it before, it's awesome. If you have any sort of flaking on your scalp and you've tried everything else, give this a go. It's definitely worth a shot. It has made such a huge difference in my scalp that I actually can choose what hair color I want now. So that's pretty sweet. This is very inexpensive. You can find it at the drugstore, you can find it at Walgreens. Shop around, make sure you're not wasting unnecessary dollars because you picked it up somewhere convenient. I always mix that with my favorite high-end shampoo. This is a shampoo that I have used for, I wanna say six years, and it's awesome. I keep repurchasing it because nothing compares for me. This is the Extra Volume Shampoo by Moroccan Oil. I shouldn't have this size. I'm not gonna get this size anymore, but I used to have a hairdresser friend who would get it for me at her pro discount. So this is the pro size. This is what your hairdresser might have if she uses this product. This is the liter size of the shampoo. This will last me over a year. I love this stuff. It separates every single little strand from each other, so I feel like I have more hair when I wash with this. It's just, it's awesome. If you have kind of dry hair, it may make your hair feel like straw afterwards because that's what volumizing shampoos do. They tend to strip more oil so that your hair can be fluffier, just in case you're unfamiliar. But this shampoo is color safe, it's sulfate and paraben free, it's also phosphate free. It smells really strong, so some people really like the scent, some people really hate it. I really like it. It smells kind of like a, like a unisex perfume, but it's, it's beautiful. I don't know what else to say. It's really expensive. I believe the, well, I'll get into that in a second because I have the conditioner over here that I just repurchased. So I don't know what price this size is normally because you, you truly can't just buy this. It's only for pros. I also use the conditioner, which I recently repurchased. This is the medium size. There's more like an eight ounce size. It's the 16.9 ounce of the conditioner, the extra volume conditioner. Again, sulfate, phosphate, paraben free, color safe. It's for fine hair. Ding, 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 that's me. This really, really helps. It's a great companion to the shampoo. It really smooths out the hair. I really like it. The fragrance matches the shampoo as well. Again, I've been using this for six years. I will continue to repurchase it. It's awesome. I wanna say the retail price for this size was $43. The eight ounce size, the normal size, is about $24, $25. Save a little bit by going with the bigger size. That's why I did this. I think it's worth it. It takes me a long time to go through it. My last eight ounce size took me a year to go through. It's still in my shower right now. That's why this guy's still sealed. It's good use of my money. I'm gonna keep buying it. Finally, the last couple of things I use to keep my hair blonde, and these are obviously just for my blonde, it's not necessarily for my curl, and these are the Joico Color Balance Purple Shampoo and Conditioner. But I use the conditioner more than I use the shampoo. The shampoo definitely has a very deep, deep purple color to it, so if you are looking to really remove the brassiness, really remove the yellow, from your hair, this is the way to do it. Pick up the shampoo, it's really awesome. You can leave it on for up to five minutes. It's not gonna dye your hair purple, but it will definitely, definitely give you the ashy quality that you want. It may take you a couple of times, depending on how brassy your blonde has gotten, but I've really enjoyed using this. I've been using this for a while. And the conditioner I use a little bit more often, just because 
all kind of cocktail my conditioners together. This one I really, really enjoy. It definitely helps keep my hair nice and ashy instead of golden. And this one has significantly less dye in it than the shampoo, so it doesn't have as strong of an effect, just so that you know. It's more of a more of a light purple. I don't wanna open it because it's gonna explode all over because I've had it standing upside down. That's it, guys. That's the end of this tutorial. <laughs> tutorial. It's not a tutorial. That's the end of this video. That's all the curly products that I have to show you. This is literally all I use. I'm not I'm not a real finicky person as far as hair. I do what I need to to get by. I always joke that if I wasn't curly I would just be a hot mess because I don't know how to do hair. It took me a really long time to get to this point and I'm still someone who never looks at the back of my head in the mirror. Like I never do that whole trick where you hold the mirror back here and look because frankly I'm not a hair person, and even if there was something wrong with the back, I couldn't fix it. <laughs> Feel free to embrace my method. Never look at the back of your hair, because who cares? Your real friends will tell you if there's a problem. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this curly video. Until next time.